Maximum fun, maximum competition, maximum value. That's the secret of the success of the Max Classes in Karting. We're with the Mini, Junior and Senior Max Classes in the Ulster Karting Club's Nuts Corner meeting this week in Maximum Attack. Welcome to Max Attack, the first of our two programmes from Nuts Corner. So what's Max Racing all about? Well, we've got Mini Max, Junior Max and Senior Max. Four years ago, the introduction of Max Racing started a real revolution in karting. Senior Max for the over 16s introduced a new user-friendly and very cost-effective class. They could use any chassis, but they had to use the Rotax Max engine, and that came as a sealed unit. Added to the package was an electric cell starter, meaning that you can do away with all those back-breaking push starts. We're pushing as hard as we can out there. We were down to the fastest lap in the wet yesterday that's been done in the wet here. Um, in our class, so we're, we're pushing as hard as we can. There must be any number of 15 drivers out there that can win every single week. Nobody will get half a car length of a lead, ever. There's no point even thinking before you go out there you're going to walk it. There's no mission. The results have been incredible, as not only is Max Racing sensationally fast, it's also well within the financial reach of most competitors. Now the Max Factor has spread to two other classes, so let's take a look at the way kart racing has maximised on these categories in Ulster. Gordon, tell us a bit more about the three classes. Right, well we have uh, three classes now. There's one from 12 to 16, which is Mini Max. You have from 13 to 16, which is Junior Max, and 16 to 60, which is Senior Max. Uh, they all use the, base, the same basic kart, which in this case is a Tony Kart Fenix. Uh, the only difference is the engine. We have a uh, in this case, a senior max engine, which has a power valve, which is very quick. They then go to junior max, which they take the power valve away. And then for mini max, they had put in an exhaust restrictor and a carburetor restrictor, so they can progress right through with the same engine, the same car. Isaac Lyons has already had a good day with a win in the first mini max race, but he'll really have to fight for this one. Lone loses a nose cone. But Wayne Boyd gets a hefty nudge from Nathan Coulter, and Nathan, it is he who comes off worst. Yes, Lone got the nose chopped off, but the other incident was caused when Boyd was squeezed between a Coulter and McEnoran sandwich. Lap two, and Ruth leads the boys, with Isaac Agnew, 47, has already forced his way through from the pack, and his other arch rival, Stuart Landis, is right on his tail. The Mini Manx class caters for the 12 to 16 year olds and as we can see, they are very accomplished racers. We're approaching the top hairpin again and Lions and Linus slip neatly into the lead and begin to pull away from a epic battle that is beginning to rage behind them. Remember that the Ulster Championships, which are being run over the two days of this meeting, are all at stake in this one. Roman Lusty, number 45, who's the other member of the top mini Max Trio, is now also in attendance. Then it's ferocious stuff. 55, that's Richard McAlorum. 31, Stefan Ferguson. 30 is Stephen Glass. And they're disputing seventh place with number 28, Jonathan Price. And now number 83, Scott Curran, has slipped past Jonathan. And 50, Stephen Wright, and 57, Adam Craig, are also on this high-speed queue. <laughs> 83, Scott Curran dives for the inside in turn one and takes two places. On to the last lap, and up front, it's no difference. 47, Isaac Lyons. 17, Stuart Linus with 10 corners left to go. If Linus just sits there, he will take the series. But he's not sure enough to realise that. Or is the temptation for another win just too great? Down the hairpin for the last time. Up the hill, this tricky right-hander. And then it's down into the horseshoe. 
Isaac desperately needs to win this one, but Stewart keeps piling on the pressure. And finishes don't come much closer than this. Yes, Lands has scored his second win of the afternoon, but Stewart's form was too good yesterday, and he takes the series. Enjoy our feature mini-max race just in a few moments. Yes, it's mini-max race two. And they're heading for the first corner. John Galloway joins me in commentary. And it's mayhem already as uh, Stephen Ferguson and Chris Crawford go out there and a couple of other carts get tangled up in that. We're on camera now with uh, Jonathan Price as they head towards the top end of the circuit following Raymond Lusty, cart number 45. The leaders climb the hill for the first time. Up into the top hairpin and you can see number 48 and 45 are tucking in behind him, just taking 48 as we head up now into the top end. But up in the lead, it's 46. Wayne Boyd, 46 leads as they come towards the end of the first lap. With him, 55, Macalorum, Richard Macalorum from Bangor. On the outside there, well there's three others on the outside but it's certainly Wayne Boyd who leads. And we saw Stephen Glass and Jonathan Price, uh, our onboard cameraman. Here we are, we're on board with them again now, right in the middle of that hunt as we head down to start lap two. Yes, Price follows, uh, as I said, his 46 win boy going off there, two or three of the other leaders off as well. I think it might be McAlorum that's left Stuart Linus at the head of the field, finishing second in our first mini racks race, but it's Linus once more at the head of the field. Raymond Lusty behind him, Scott Curran is third. Well, Linus may have had a gift at that first corner, but he's now losing out, losing out two places because Lusty's gone through and Scott Curran followed him through into second place. Yes, sir, and Linus still in the picture. Back behind him is 16, Nathan Coulter, with that eating threesome who all came through the cadet classes in recent years, starting to get away from the head of the field with Raymond Lusty, the young Lauren driver in eating, Scott Curran second, Stuart Linus is in third. That's Lusty, 45, 83, Curran, 17, Linus. We're on board now once more. Yes, on board with Jonathan Price. We're coming down into the fourth corner. Lyons is the target at the moment. We're lying in fourth place. There we are, the little red cart, number 28. And all kinds of attention, both before and after. Skipping ahead to lap five, and not much change. The leader's through once more, and Lyons on cart 47. There is following, trying to get in touch with that familiar group that he's always in amongst the head of them, which is headed by Curran, Linus, and Lusty. Lusty, I think, still at the head of the field. We're still following Isaac Lyons down through the twists of the Nuts Corner circuit and up through the hill and back with the leaders. And there's our race leader, Lusty, once more, cart 45. In second place behind him, still Stuart Linus. Lusty glancing back over his shoulder, trying to keep Linus at bay. I think Scott Curran is still third, and Isaac Lyons is not far back behind them. And that's him closing on Scott Curran, number 83. The onboard camera of John Hood Price taking us through the twists and turns of the circuit as Lusty and Linus come through once more. So two little gaps now. The leaders have pulled away here and this is the battle for third. But there it is. Very close indeed. First and second. Lusty and Linus absolutely hard in battle. Not uh, having a chance to glance back. Indeed they don't need to because they're a good uh, oh, couple of seconds now adrift of the third place. Yes, Lusty got it very, very sideways down through to Shaquille that time. Linus closed them. He glanced back for a moment, Plum, but he managed to keep him in bay. But what a tremendous battle between this leading two some these two young men who are very, very mature, despite their young years. They've spent a lot of years in karting already and proving how skillful they are at the moment. There's Lusty throwing it side once more, once more. Stuart Linus from Bleary right in behind him. And this could have been uh, the race, in fact, that uh, has upset uh, Ly uh, Lyons' uh, progress in the Ulster Championships because the man who's in second place at the moment is the man who's really pulling up the points this weekend. Yes, indeed he is, but Isaac Lyons isn't that far adrift in that group behind. We may pick him up again shortly. Watch out for cart number 46 of the young Lisbon driver, and there's Linus going the inside of Lusty at the top end of the circuit and taking the lead this time. Can he make it stick down through the compression and into the Dundrod Herpin? as they come to the start and finish straight once more, but it is indeed Stuart Linus who now leads, a very neat manoeuvre indeed, but back comes Lusty once more and is inside to take the lead once more. Great stuff indeed, and Lusty even had time to glance over his shoulder to see where Lyons is. He probably can't believe that he's not that close at the moment, but he can't uh, afford to slacken off at all because here it comes and there's a back marker in the way there. Yes, this might indeed be a problem. The closing stage is contact. Lusty right up in the air, keeps it back on the circuit. Linus through the inside. Thankfully, both drivers quite all right. But it's Linus now who leads once more. 
You know, it is in replay, and you can see how high up that cart was. That was really quite a moment, but it's given Lions the chance to close up. Yes, Isaac Lions now almost in touch with them as they're running out of laps in this one, and that's in fact Lions is very much in touch. Linus still leads, Stuart Linus number 17, there's Isaac Lyons in second, Raymond Lusty now in third, or is he? He's back through into second once more, obviously that little shunt had no effect on him, glancing back at his friend and rival Isaac Lyons as they went through there, I'm sure they're grinning at each other on those, those helmets, or maybe it's a grimace. And they left it too late, I think, to tow themselves up into contention with Linus at the moment. These two are probably slowing each other up a little bit, but if they can play it together and slipstream each other, they could again tow themselves up to the leader. Yes, indeed, but Stuart Linus is still that leader, and he will be determined not to give it away, looking very calm at the head of the field. And the battle raging for second and third. We have a change again, or have we? Yes, it's... Uh, Lyon's gone through, Lyon's gone through up to second, and again, can he hold it? Lusty's in a very pugnacious mood this weekend. He goes down the inside again and takes it back. A lot of bodywork uh, contact there. Tremendous stuff, and just look at young Scott Curran, who's back into the picture behind him. But it's very close, and there's only one corner to go now. They're going towards the checkered flag. It's no doubt about it. Linus gets it, and who gets second? It's a photo finish, and it just goes to Lusty. Tied over the three of us all weekend. I won one in the wet and I had one one today and a second in the last run. Which do you prefer, the wet or the dry? They're both pretty good and good in both of them. Welcome back to the Ulster Kart Club's Nuts Corner Meeting, where we're moving up the max classes. First, the junior max racers with Keith Forsyth from Hillsborough in the CMC Construction Tony Kart, and he's been an unformed man all weekend. Junior Maxes, the slightly older gauge group. They started 13 in this group, and that's Stephen Rutherdale who leads down around the first corner. We've got contact, we've lost four at least there and at the first corner. And indeed it was Keith Forsyth, Jason Wilson and Alan Davidson who were all in that melee. And Stephen Rutherdale is the man who benefits. He's well away now at the head of the field with 32, Chris Irwin in second. Chris Lone's also in there, Keith Forsyth is uh, recovering and Scott Taggart is in amongst that. And there they are, number 33, Scott Taggart uh, in amongst that uh, battle and getting it all kinds of sideways there. 33 is Scott Taggart indeed from Glenavy, just very close to Nuts Corner, that's 38 behind him. 38 is Keith Forsyth, who's been going very well this weekend. 44, the yellow cart there of Neil Graham. But Stephen Rutherdale, I think, is still our race leader and getting clear of this bunch. Junior Max, uh, they've uh, been had a little bit of telling off from uh, the clock of the course from time to time. It gets pretty rough in there at times. But fairly well behaved at the moment. And very close racing indeed as they come up the hill to the hairpin. Neil Graham, 44, alongside of Alistair Jackson, they're 24 from Kildare, County Kildare. A little bit of contact between those two, but here's the leader. That's one out in front, Stephen Rutherford. Yes, Rutherdale still leads this one, going extremely well on cart 41. Bit of a gap before 32 in second. 32 still Chris Irwin. A lot of pressure behind him from 38 and 33. Keith Forsyth and Scott Taggart. Very close together, these three battling out the minor positions. Easy to spot uh, Forsyth, he's the taller of these three. Has a look down the inside, but decides to get back in the slipstream again. This is out a little bit in that maneuver to go into the compression. And indeed, uh, 33, Taggart's gone through. Yes, Taggart moving up another position, coming in behind 32, Chris Irwin. Very loose side part in that card of Taggart, if you'll notice, but that's not going to make any difference to the performance of the card. No, no, they're obviously rubber-mounted, most of them, so in case they can take a little blue, so that will not be a problem. Rutherdale urging the card along, you saw the little nod of the head there as he tried to push it down that straight a little bit quicker. He knows the opposition is not very far away, but they're involved with each other at the moment, and he can take advantage of that. 32, the distinctive red card, uh, Chris Irwin, his dad, uh, does a lot of rallying, in fact, very much involved with the Cold Rain Motor Club there, but here's our leader, Rutherdale, way out in front, very neat, very tidy, and pulling away. 
Well, his family are very much involved with the Ulster Carney Club Plum, and he's having a very good run at the moment. They're probably much too busy even to watch this, but uh, Stephen's doing a grand job here on Easter Tuesday and pulling away from the opposition. So, drifting out there, using all the circuit. We're looking again at Owen. Owen now under big, big pressure from his side from the cash converters caught there. But up in front, it's Weatherdale. Weatherdale, a really quite a lonely position at the moment. Taggart is pulled away also in second, but there's the battle. And there goes Forsyth down the inside. There's Keith Forsyth moving up on the inside of 32. Chris Irwin has become the closing stage of this one. Taggart has got away in second, but it's Keith Forsyth, the Hillsborough driver now, up into third. Irwin is still with him, however. Number 32, that red outfit right in behind him. And it's been between these two for the Junior Max uh, Ulster title all weekend. Uh, Forsyth has had two wins in the wet yesterday. Irwin has had wins, so it's very important. This man's out of it for the championship, but who's going to take it? In fact, third place man, Forsyth, gets the series. Stephen Rutherdale, who takes it from Scott Taggart and Keith Forsyth. It was close racing. There was very tight at times, you know. I got a couple of wins and then came from the back in the last couple of heats and just managed to get the, the enough points. I'll uh, probably move up into seniors next year and uh, senior max. the no-holds barred max machines no-holds literally as the car builders do not have restrictors like in the mini and junior max brothers well this is our first side of the rotax max senior class today and there's usually a little bit of mayhem on this one as well and they're on their way with the 85 i think it is who leads well jason Perrin, i think in a blue car they just uh, got the jump at the start and there's mayhem mayhem up at the chicane and it's Jason Curran who leads from Neville Bell and Joseph McGonigal, 33, the driver from Knox and Donegal. McGonigal uh, fiddling there with his carburetor as he tries to dive down the inside and gets up into second place. So the Donegal driver up into second, but not for long. Neville Bell comes back through. Neville very, very much a local here at Knott's Corner, but Joe McGonigal still working away the cart. Doesn't seem happy with it. He seemed to throw something away there as well. 98, Richard Fitzsimmons, another very much front runner, is right in the pack there. That's the man just behind these two. And out the front, Jason Curran, the man heading for the Ulster Championship. There he is, looking very comfortable at the moment, but look at this battle behind. Yes, Curran looks very determined at the head of the field with a colossal battle building behind. Headed just a moment by Joe McGonigal behind Joe. That's Richard Fitzsimmons, Neville Bell, a whole host of other Rutax senior outfits. Up they come, trying to get a slipstream advantage, we're ahead to lap eight, and no change in first, second and third, but it's a little bit more spread out, with the battle for second still on. Here's the real interest, however, the battle for fourth. Yes, Neville Bell just holding that with Keith Bickerstaff behind him. Then we've number five, five is uh, Stuart Philip Clements. And they all go down into the chicane and then that uphill struggle across the uh, curves they go up now into the hairpin and a real outbreaking match. But here's the man who's way out in his own, Jason Curran, very, very accomplished max driver. And he can even afford to look relaxed and uh, far from relaxed behind him, however. Hand in the air, number nine, he's in trouble. But Jason Curran takes the win. And McGonigal second, but Simmons third, Philip Clements fourth, with Keith Biggerstaff coming in fifth. The gloves are on, or should I say off, for the final Rotax Max race of a long weekend. Ten laps of the long circuit lie ahead of these super fast racers in the most popular kart racing class in the UK. Yes, it's been a tremendous class since its introduction, a great success here in the province, and once again it's Jason Curran at the head of the field in part number one. McGonagall, as before, in behind him. Not often the Rotax race on the big circuit in that corner, but certainly providing much more excitement than they normally do at times on the shorter circuit, I think, on this big circuit this weekend. And they're through the chicane, and there's mayhem, they're off all the rally crossing, they're almost on the rally cross course there, but very little damage done. First three, no change. Curran, McGonagall, Clements. Clements number five behind them now. Sorting themselves out as they go round the horseshoe. And uh, once again, with Jason uh, really dumping his uh, authority in this class. But this time McGonagall's going to give him a real fight. He certainly is, and close isn't the word for it. You notice the shape of the front of McGonagall's car that seems to fit right in under Jason Curran's back bumper as they come down through here. But Jason fending him off very successfully. 
It's really an eight-wheeler at the moment. It's hardly two cars. They're not separated at all as they come up the hill. Oh, Frank's and Jason wondering where that guy is. He's right behind your shoulder at the moment. Yes, not a lot of those eight wheels are on the ground most of the time, but uh, it's a tremendous race at the head of the field. Jason Curran, Joe McGonagall, 1 and 33 behind them. So the Teddy Gold man really putting on the pressure here this time around. Jason Curran just picking up the wins all weekend, though. He's looking like the champion. We're moving ahead, and it gives you a real idea of the speed of these carts on the next corner circuit as we have the bumper cam on the leader. And he's wondering where that man is behind him. He's right behind him. Jason Curran then, on board with him as we come up the hill towards the hairpin. This is probably just as well that camera's not on the second cart. It mightn't have survived, but McGonagall is right in underneath the back bumper of Jason Curran once more, but Curran doing his best to fend him off. They sweep down in the horseshoe once more. In third place now is Ryan McGuinness, then Philip Clements. Behind them, number two, Philip Hartness. Look out for number 11, though. That's Turking, Gary, Gary Turkington. He's been circuit racing in England in the last two seasons and has come back to his first love karting. Yes, Gary, son of another dynasty in karting and uh, very successful in motor racing. Good to see him back out in karting once more. But Jason Curran still leads just from Joe McGonagall. No, is there any way McGonagall can get his way past? Any way these lot can sort themselves out? Look at that. Diving into the chicane. Well, anything good happen in the closing stages of this one? That's a colossal battle for the minor positions. Ryan McGuinness is just ahead of them on cart 24, hanging on to a very, very good third position. And probably very glad he's not embroiled in this struggle. It's been headed by Philip Clements, number five at this moment in time, from two, Philip Hartless. 77 is uh, Aaron McMaster. There's talking to the 11, just ahead of him at the moment. And he's certainly back in the thick of it as he comes back to Carlton. Yes, maybe he wishes he was back in the choir realms of former Ford as we go on board once more. We're down at the far end of the circuit uh, and just coming onto the main straight where these carts will be touching all oh, well over 90 miles an hour. Incredible stuff. 24 just going through picture there. And at the head of the ball, it's still number one, Jason Curran from Joe McGonagall. Ryan McGinnis still holds third. And that is our leading two, some of a bit of a gap. That's a bit of a change. So once again, just when it counted, he's got a little bit of a lead, but uh, it's now a threesome, in fact. 33 and a gun ball. In fact, uh, a little bit confusing there, because that's bigger stuff in the middle of the number 84. He, in fact, has been in trouble and dropped a lap or two, and he lets the second place down to it. He split up the lead battle a little bit. Look at this, on board again as we come to take the second flag, his second win on television. Jason gets it, the gun is second, and Ryan McGinn is third. Today, just everything seemed to have came well together, you know, with a few help from some friends. If I had the funds, I would go to England and race uh, a couple of professional karting and then progress on the cars. So that's the winning formula, maximum value for minimum expenditure, always a winner. We'll be back in four weeks' time with Minnows and Mighty Men, a look at the cadet and gearbox classes from the Ulster Karting Club's Nuts Corner events. And if you want to catch some motorsport this weekend, there's rallying with the Mid Antrim Motor Club on Saturday and the Munster Rally on Sunday. Next week in RPM, which moves to Tuesday, we're looking back on the Luxembourg Rally and forward to the Mandelo Super Race Sundays.